I have with me a very special guest. Joining me on the telecast is Robert Perlman. He's the editor of uh, Collect Space magazine. Uh, it's, it's an American uh, magazine and uh, Robert Perlman is a journalist and a space historian. It's fantastic to have you, Robert, on the telecast with us. And uh, uh, it's, it's been a fantastic feat. The country is celebrating that ISRO has been successfully able to soft land Chandrayaan-3 lander Vikram on the south pole of the moon. I think the whole world is celebrating. It's it's a it's a great um, achievement. There's only been four countries that have been able to achieve this. Only two within the last 47 years. One of them being now India. Um, it is something to be celebrated. Absolutely. Uh, does this also uh, put forth give the possibility for other space missions, whether it is NASA or ESA or the Russia space mission, a uh, uh, a path? to then go about further exploring the moon's surface now that we have finally been able to set foot on the south pole of the moon. Um, indeed, this is, you know, you're the, you're the first to arrive, but there's a lot coming uh, on the heels of this mission. Uh, the south pole is the new destination uh, on the moon. Uh, we're going to see uh, um, the United States try to, uh, two companies within the United States under contract with NASA um, launch missions later this year. There'll be more following next year. Uh, there's a Japanese lander that um, is planned to launch later this month. Um, and the South Pole is intriguing because it holds the promise of, of, of ice and, and water, um, which is not just good for sustaining human life, but is also a great way of making um, rocket fuel, uh, if we can demonstrate that on the surface, to get us to Mars. Um, so, uh, the south, so you're where Chandrayaan three has touched down is is the new hot property on the moon. Absolutely. Now, now, what next for uh, the space world? You spoke about the collaborations that are taking place, the future launches that are going to happen, whether it by America or Japan or even Russia. Unfortunately, that uh, you know, Luna twenty five could not make it. It crashed into the moon's surface. But but these these. Uh, uh, efforts are being renewed. Uh, why do you think there was a lull in between after the first man landing on moon and Russia and America in that space war? And in between, the, in between, there were no there were no such space missions to to explore the lunar surface. And now suddenly, again, a spot of them. I think it's a it's a multi part reason. There's for one, you know, when we when the goal was to land on the moon, it was part of a political, and um, it, it was part of a political race. It was fighting a war, a cold war in space rather than developing missiles, developing better rockets to send um, to get further and further into space and to show technical prowess that way. Um, when the moon landing was achieved in 1969. Um, the you know the goal that was set out at least here for uh, the United States was to land a man on the moon and return him safely to Earth. There was no mention of establishing a moon base or um, or sustaining science or um, or settling or going further. So the goal had been achieved. Um, we went several more times, and then and then we moved on because at first it was expensive, and second, the goal there wasn't a, there wasn't a a, 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 a a large support for continuing. It's now taken 40 years for uh, uh, for a number of advancements. One for the price of launching to space to come down, for commercial companies to get involved, um, but also for to find a new reason to go back to the moon. And that is both to bring the rest of the world there. That's that's first and foremost, but mm -hmm. also to practice um, to to get the right practice and the and the right knowledge so that we can push out further into the solar system. Okay. All right. So then, so then. Um can we then envisage India to be a global space power and also the journey that India has taken, perhaps uh, maybe space economies across the globe not really taking India seriously. But, but does this definitely mark India's coming of age when it comes to being a global space power? I think it, I think in some ways India has already established that. You've had a Mars mission. Um, you've, you've now landed on the moon. Um, you're a partner with the Artemis Accords with NASA and, and with countries around the world. Yeah. Um, I think this establishes India definitely. Uh, this this achievement today does definitely does does add another feather in the cap and, and remind people that India does have a space program and that it is doing great things, things that other countries are still finding hard to do, even countries that did it 47 years ago. Um, so. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, this is, uh, I think this, this brings India to the table of participating in, you know, the next steps and, and definitely in seeing uh, human humans return to the moon. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. So the big question, you know, there were there were obviously science fiction has has spoken a lot, written a lot about uh, about whether there is habitation that can be found on the South Pole and whether there could be a manned landing on the South Pole. C could there be a possibility to it, or at least are we moving towards that possibility now? That is the that is the goal, at least for the Artemis program here in the states. Uh, the the next mission uh, to launch will take humans around the moon, but then Artemis three is intended to land at the lunar South Pole region uh, with uh, two people um, and uh, mark humanity's return to the moon um, and start the exploration of the South Pole. Um, we when we first went to the moon in 1969 and uh, through 1972, we landed in the equatorial region, uh, the center of the moon and. Um, the and that was because there was large open plains and there was better sunlight and there was uh, and there was it was easier from a fuel consumption manner uh, but now we're attempting something much more difficult which is to get there down to the to the pole to land in an area where there's uh, there are shadows and there are um, permanently shadowed areas where it'll be much more difficult from a visible, from a visibility angle, and then, but the but the rewards are, are greater. We might, as I mentioned before, find water, and as we expect to be there, and uh, trapped in permanent ice, uh, in inside craters, right. and be able to extract that and use it. All right, uh, thank you, Pearl, for joining us on the telecast. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.